Welcome to the December 27th worship of Fort Hill United Methodist Church. My name is Mark Brown. I'm the pastor of Fort Hill Church. And it's my privilege to share in ministry with Jacob Dishman, our director of music ministries at Fort Hill. As you are looking at worship today, we invite you to, to obtain an order of worship, which you can find as an attachment to the method by which you are viewing worship today. Let us join together in our call to worship. Do not be afraid, for see, I am bringing you good news of a great joy to all the people. For to you was born this day in the city of David a Savior, who is the Messiah, the Lord. Send, O God, into the darkness of this troubled world the light of your Son. Let the star of your hope touch the minds of all people, and so direct our steps that we may ever walk in the way revealed to us, as the shepherds walked with joy to the manger where he dwelled, who is now and ever reigns in our hearts, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Our scripture for today comes from the second chapter of the Gospel of Luke, verses 22 through 40. When the time came for their purification according to the law of Moses, they brought him up to Jerusalem to present him to the Lord. As it is written in the law of the Lord, every firstborn male shall be designated as holy to the Lord. And they offered a sacrifice according to what is stated in the law of the Lord, a pair of turtle doves or two young pigeons. Now there was a man in Jerusalem whose name was Simeon. This man was righteous and devout, looking forward to the consolation of Israel and the Holy Spirit rested on him. It had been revealed to him by the Holy Spirit that he would not see death before he had seen the Lord Messiah. Guided by the Spirit, Simeon came into the temple, and when what was customary under the law was done by his parents, Simeon took him in his arms 
and praise God, saying, Master, now you are dismissing your servant in peace according to your word, for my eyes have seen your salvation, which you have prepared in the presence of all peoples, a light for revelation to the Gentiles and for glory to your people Israel. And the child's father and mother were amazed at what was being said about him. Then Simeon blessed them and said to his mother Mary, This child is destined for the falling and the rising of many in Israel, and to be a sign that will be opposed, so that the inner thoughts of many will be revealed, and a sword will pierce your soul also. There was also a prophet, Anna, the daughter of Phanuel of the tribe of Asher. She was of great age, having lived with her husband seven, seven years after her marriage, then as a widow to the age of 84. She never left the temple, but worshiped there with fasting and prayer night and day. At the moment she came and began to praise God and speak about, all, speak about the child to all who were looking for the redemption of Jerusalem. When they had finished everything required by the law of the Lord, they returned to Galilee to their own town of Nazareth. The child grew and became strong, filled with wisdom, and the favor of God was upon him. May God bless the reading and the hearing of God's holy word. Amen. Well, here we are. It is the last Sunday of 2020, a year that I would venture to say will not soon be forgotten. As we reflect on the, all the events of this year, the pandemic, the unrest, we may feel as though we are living in a foreign land, in exile, you might say, from what we have once known. As we have lived throughout this year, we may find it easier to understand the words of the psalmist in Psalm 137, as the leaders of, of Judah have been taken into exile in Babylon. And there these words were written, by the rivers of Babylon, there we sat down and there we wept when we remembered Zion. On the willows there we hung our harps. For there our captors asked us for songs and our tormentors treated us with mirth saying, sing us one of the songs of Zion. How could we sing the Lord's song in a foreign land? As I've been reflecting on this year and the events that have occurred, I came across a story that I think fairly accurately describes where we have found ourselves this year. There was a child who had been diagnosed with a high IQ but she was unable to complete the easiest of tasks. She could not add two figures together. She could not spell correctly. She could not read a simple story. And she was messy. Particularly, she was messy as she turned in her papers and on the upper left-hand corner, it was just scribble and doodling. A maze of letters. Well, when the child reached the 11th grade, psychiatrists were able to diagnose her learning disability and the child was able to communicate and to unblock her learning difficulties. As a result, those who worked with her were able to see for the first time and understand the maze of letters that she wrote and doodled in the upper left-hand corner of her papers. 
One letter on top of the other she had written, and the letters were these, H-E-L-P-M-E, help me. Well, here it is, the last Sunday of the year 2020. We have lived a year that seems like we have been in exile in a foreign land. We have lived a year that seems like a lifetime as we have heard and deciphered pleas of help for people from all walks of life. But on this last Sunday of 2020, if we listen and look closely, we can see and hear a message of hope that is found in the midst of cries for help. Today's scripture lesson from the Gospel of Luke tells a story of hope. It tells of a time when Simeon and Anna saw Mary and Joseph bringing their child Jesus to the temple to be consecrated to the Lord. As Simeon and Anna saw Jesus, they knew the true meaning of his birth. Luke describes these two people, Simeon and Anna, in this way. Simeon was righteous and devout, looking forward to the consolation of Israel as the Holy Spirit rested upon him. Simeon had been promised by God that he would not see death before he saw the Messiah. Is it no wonder that Simeon rejoiced as he saw Jesus and as the Spirit moved within him, as he understood the true meaning of Jesus' birth, as he held him up and thanked God for this child. Anna was a prophet. She was 84 years of age, and Luke tells us that she did not leave the temple as she worshiped there and fasted there night and day. Anna knew the true meaning of Jesus' birth as she rejoiced in God and spoke to all who would listen of the consolation of Israel through the child, Jesus, the Messiah. When I read the account of Simeon and Anna encountering Jesus and Mary and Joseph in the temple, I find it interesting to note that uh, out of all the people who were present in the temple on that day, there were only two people, Simeon and Anna, who knew the true meaning of Jesus' birth. It was only Simeon and Anna who realized the hope that was present because of this child. Today is the last Sunday of 2020. It is a day in which we proclaim the hope of our Savior because we know the true meaning of Jesus' birth. We know the Messiah. Reverend D. A. Sharon wrote about hope becoming real in July of this year. I invite you to hear what he wrote. When we rang in 2020 and a new decade, not that long ago, none of us knew our lives would be turned upside down by the ongoing coronavirus pandemic. It almost feels like we've lived multiple years in a few months. Most of us have experienced grief of some sort, whether we're grieving those lost to the virus or grieving for the security of the normal life that no longer seems to exist. Last month, I enjoyed watching, rewatching Selma, which chronicled the journey of Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. and the civil rights movement in Selma, Alabama. 
as the grandson of sharecroppers from rural Alabama, this movie inspired me. It also challenged me to be a bridge of hope and an agent of change. So I really felt the ground shake beneath me again when I learned of the transitions of Reverend C.T. Vivian and Congressman John Lewis, two towering figures of the American Civil Rights Movement. Of course, unlike Dr. King, these legends were blessed with the gift of long life and were actually see some, able to see some of the fruit of their labors. Immediately I began to grasp, or to grapple with the weight of their absence, pondering to myself, where do we go from here? What do we do when our elders become our ancestors and their presence is no longer with us? While grieving and thinking about this, I was reminded of a, of a familiar passage of scripture. In the book of Joshua, God speaks to Joshua after Moses dies. He reminds him that while Moses is gone, Joshua must arise and possess the Holy Land. Therefore, God commissions the children of Israel to mourn Moses, but prompts Joshua to move forward. These verses comfort me in a crisis. When we refuse to mourn, we allow, we allow ourselves to think we are healed when we aren't. However, when we refuse to move, we can become so paralyzed by the past that we fail to launch into the future. I believe that in such a time as this, while many, myself included, have lost loved ones during the pandemic and are grappling with deep-seated grief from the world that once was, we must mourn. And then we also must move, knowing that God embraces us when we, when we feel wounded, broken, and hurt. This gives me hope, hope that springs from the promise of a brighter and better tomorrow. Well, on this Sunday, this last Sunday of the year 2020, we gather and we mourn, but we move forward because we know the true meaning of Jesus' birth. We know that we are called to hope through our faith in the Messiah. On this last Sunday of 2020, we prepare to move forward because the God who has been faithful in the past has promised to be faithful in the future. Next week, we will begin a six weeks six week series on what it means to move forward in the true faith of Jesus. We will do so as we consider the three things that are eternal that Paul writes about in 1 Corinthians chapter 13, verse 13, faith, hope, and love. As we begin a new year, let us remember that we give thanks to God for what is ahead because we know that God calls us in the name of Jesus. May God bless you as you, as you understand the true meaning of Jesus' birth. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, amen. I invite us to join together in a time of, of prayer for thanksgiving and intercession. Holy God, heaven and earth are met this day in the newborn child, Savior of the world. We celebrate his birth, for in him you come to be close to us, that we might be close to you. Especially we give thanks to you 
for the birth, life, and death of resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ and all he means to us. For prospects of peace in the world, for confidence in your almighty love, for those who generously give, for those who graciously receive, for all the church nurturing us in the faith. God of all mercy, as you have come in Jesus Christ to be our guest, inspire our hearts to a hospitality that welcomes all your children in his name. Especially we pray for those who have not heard your good news, for the sick and suffering, for those who know no laughter, only tears, for those who govern and rule, for those enslaved by tyranny, for prisoners of addiction or abuse, for the church as a refuge for the needy. All this we pray in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Friends, as you go forth in the faith and fellowship of Jesus Christ this day, may the blessings of God go forth with you as you live in the hope of Jesus' birth. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen.